Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about milling. One of the first things you need to know about milling is, of course, the joiner. This is probably the first tool you're going to use uh, when you're trying to get a piece of lumber flat. Uh, when I talk about milling, what I mean is simply how do you get this rough board um, flat and square. Um, so the first step is you're going to take to the joiner and we're going to deal with one face. But before I get into that, I'm going to talk about the joiner just a little bit. This is an 8 inch joiner. It works pretty well for most of my needs. Um, you have the in feed table and then you have the out feed table. Obviously you've got your safety guard. And then you've got your fence here that um, goes from 90 to 45, it can tilt. And the way this works is it's got a, a cutter head. In this case, it's a straight blade and there's four knives in here. And it's going to rotate and as you run your piece of wood, your piece of lumber, across this, it's going to flatten it. And as you can see, I just placed this down here. This thing's rocking around so it's not flat. That's what this will do. It's only to be used to do one face and one edge. You're not going to try to get your piece of lumber milled down to your you know, desired dimension by doing one face and flipping it and doing the other face. That's not going to work. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, the in-feed and the out-feed table. And this is pretty simple how to adjust this. You loosen this gauge and then you're just going to move this wheel up and down and it gives you a little gauge here. Um, it goes from anywhere from zero to a half inch. A half inch is insane. I've never gone that much. I don't think you ever will need to. Usually I'm within about the zero and eighth inch and that gets you know me what I need. Um, so the outfit table is where it gets more complicated. Uh, it can be real frustrating um, if the outfit table is not set correctly. So I'm going to show you a real easy way to just uh, check that and make sure everything's good to go before you start your milling uh, project. So I'm going to grab a piece of wood and I'm just going to run this guy across uh, one time and then I'm going to use it to check the outfit table. Whilst I do this, I'm going to move back to safety guard just so you guys can see what's going on. Um, my hand is uh, plenty safe since this is a very high piece, but obviously when you're doing this, you do not want to move this out of the way. This guy should always be in place. All right, guys, so I just ran that through, and I can tell straight away by just pushing down here, it's rocking back and forth, um, that the outfit tail was too low. So it's kind of hard to tell, but right at this end, it's got a snipe, so it dipped. And what happens is it's coming across, and then at the very end, it drops down because this outfit table is too low. This, the outfit table should match the cut that you're taking off, maybe a couple of thousandths lower. Um, so to adjust that now, I'm going to run this guy in about four inches, take it back out, turn everything off, and then I'm going to check uh, how the outfit table relates to that cut. Alright guys, so I just uh, ran this in about four inches or so um, so I can see what's going on and you can see the cut that it's taken off right now is about a sixteenth. Well this outfit table needs to match that cut. Uh, a few thousandths lower typically works well. So now I can move this in. I'm going to get it past that cutter head. There you go. It's not in a fan with the cutter head, but you can see it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a 64th or so gap um, underneath this, and that's why I'm getting that snipe on the tail end. So with this in place, I'm going to adjust the outfit table. All right, so now I'm just going to raise this up until it's just underneath that cut. All right, so that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna lock that back down and, and do one more test. All 
All right, so now you can see it's nice and flat up against the outfit table. So that's a good cut. You run your finger down it. There's no snipe anywhere. So we're good to go. That will deliver a nice flat board. All right, guys, so we've gone over the outfit table being too low. And that's typically the one that's uh, most common. And it's really easy to figure out what's going on there because you see the snipe at the end. Uh, one that I found students have the harder time with is when the outfit table is too high. Um, obviously, if this outfit table is a 16th or an 8th inch too high, you're going to know straight away. You bring this in, it's just going to bang up against it. But if it's even a few thousandths too high, you won't know unless you're paying attention when you're running it. And what happens is it cuts it for so, you know, a certain amount and then starts raising it up slowly without you even knowing. But what you do tell is this. You, you basically you make a bow, it's like a rocker, and it'll just keep doing that no matter how many times you run across it. So I'm going to run this across, and if you watch uh, the front end of this as it comes through, it should be flat, but see what happens. It's going to raise up slowly. So it's pretty clear, you can see it's cutting off that front end, it raises it up and it doesn't cut really anything off the back end and that's what happens. Well, that's not going to help, um, you know, you got to get everything nice and flat and true if you want to have a good uh, project and have good joinery. So now I can go ahead and adjust that and the easiest way to do this, I know it's too high. I'm just going to drop it lower than it probably needs, I'm going to run in take a four inch pass like I did before, and then raise it up to that again. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the table. All right, so I'm pretty sure that's too low now, so I'm gonna run it again. So like before, I just did about four inches or so, and now that gives me um, the way to bring it back up. All right, so now I'm just gonna raise this up to the bottom of that cut. I mean, it should be pretty much spot on. A couple of thousandths will work. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead, lock that out, and run it one more time. All right, so that's it. Nice and flat. Good to go. Now we've got the, um, the joiner set up, the outfit table set up. We're going to talk about how to mill a piece of wood. So this is just some lumber. It's, um, you know, it's rough milled right now, rough sawn. And so there's nothing flat about this or square about this piece. Um, the joiner is to get one face flat. And the way I like to do this, and the way I was taught, is I'm going to get one face flat, and then I'm going to take that face over to the planer. Basically, what the planer does, the knife, the head's up here, and it's just going to cut whatever this is doing. So if this is a bowed board, it's just going to copy it. It's not going to make anything flat. It will clean it up and make it look nice, but it will be bowed, cupped, twisted. So it's really important. Your first step is always the joiner. So I like to get this face perfectly flat. Now that's going to go on the bed of the planer. The head's up here on the planer, and it's just going to copy this. It's going to make this top edge parallel to this bottom edge. All right, so a couple of things to point out. When you put the board, the first thing I'm going to do is just going to put it down here, and I'm going to you know, just check it out and see what's going on. So I can see there's a little bit of twist back uh, from corner to corner. Flip it around, see what's going on here. And this side's a little bit better, so I'm going to go with that. Usually if you've got it cupped, you want the cup, I guess, up. If it's bowed, you want the bow up. And the idea is, if, you're, if your board's bowed, you're going to be just going to cross however many times you need to basically bring this front edge and this back edge down until you get a flat board. 
Another thing to point out, you do not want to push down. I see people all the time, they're weighing down on this thing, and as they go through, they let go, it's just springing back. You want the weight of the wood, um, you know, obviously use a push stick to be safe, and just light pressure going across, and you just want to get this flat, that's the goal. Another thing to watch out for is grain direction. Obviously, I picked this piece because it's very clear as far as the grain goes. Like I mentioned before, it's really important that you start reading the grain of your wood. Uh, that way, you're going to get a much better finished result. Uh, in this case, it's pretty easy to tell. This grain is running up and out of the top here. So if I'm going to join this, it's perfect going down just like this. This, this is the face I'm going to join. Um, on the joiner, you want that grain raising up, out, um, and that way you're not going to get tear out. If I went ahead, and I'll turn this around, it's a little hard to see the grain, but now that grain's pointing down. If I were to run this across the joiner, it's going to tear out. Those fibers are going to get pulled and just get ripped out, kind of like shaving backwards. Um, so on the joiner, grain up and out. On the planer, it's the other way. Planer, you want the grain going down because the knives on the planer are on the top. Hey guys, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to join a piece of wood and get a square, a 90 degree edge on that uh, piece. So the way I'm going to show you is how I used to do it. And now that um, after my mentorship for seven years, I'm going to show you the way that my mentor showed me how to do it and why it's a better way to mill a piece of wood. So typically what you'll see is people will just take the board, they'll run it across the joiner. That's already been done in this case, so I've got a flat face. And then they're going to go ahead and set it up and run it at a 90. Yes, that gets you a true 90 to that face, that first face that you did. But the problem is, is you don't have any options. If this grain's running down, and like we spoke about before, you don't want that grain running down, you're stuck. You have to put that joint face has to go up against your fence. So you can't turn this piece around. Ideally, I want it to go this way. Well, I, have, I can't do that because this is not joined. So what I like to do and what I was, you know, how I was taught to do it is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to join this flat, and then I'm going to go to the planer and make this top edge parallel to this bottom. And then I go back to the joiner and I can pick whichever way I want to do this edge. So I'm going to go ahead and just demonstrate the one way of doing it. Um, and that's just by putting this up. Now, never assume that this is square. So I'm just going to get my um, combination square here. And yeah, it's definitely not square. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that real quick. Let's see, there's no fine adjustment on this guy. You just have to mess with it until you get it just right. All right, that looks good. Another thing is when you tighten this down, you never want to just crank this down and then just go. You want to check it one more time because a lot of times cranking that moves things around. All right, that looks good. All right, so now I'm going to make this edge at a 90 to this face and you know, you don't just want to throw this up there and not pay any attention and just go for it. You want to inspect it. I usually look down this face here and make sure that I'm up against that edge, up against this fence. That's what we're referencing off right now. So light pressure inwards, and then I'm just on the back of this, and I'm just going to go through very gently. In this case, I'm not going to try to use a paddle on the back since I'm so, you know, got so much height above the table. There's no way my fingers are in any danger. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that real quick. All right, so that got me my true 90, and that works just fine. And for years, I did it just like that until I realized there was a better way to do it. And the way I like to do it, and I'm going to show you how to do it now, is first step you're going to face join you get this one face nice and flat and then we're going to go to the planer we're going to make this top edge parallel to this and then we come back here and make our edge 90 and that gives us selection and makes it where I can pick and choose what edge and what face I want to use 
All right, guys, so now I'm coming over to the planer. Uh, this is a 12 inch, actually, I think it's a 13 inch a DeWalt, uh, three blades, and it's a great little planer. It works really well. Um, so, again, talking about grain direction, I've got this face nice and flat. That's going to go down on the bed. In the planer, the knives are on the top now, so it's doing this. So, this grain, it's a little hard to see here, but this grain is going down like that so you want that grain going down to the bed and that way you're going to get a much nicer cut so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to plane this down so nice thing feature on this got this little gauge here i pretty rarely ever use this measurement on the side i'll come in and just get it where it's just starting take a measurement and then i know one rotation on this guy is 1 16th so I'll just figure out, do the math, and just trust the rotations, and it works every time perfectly. So I'm going to turn the dust collector on. All right, so now I've got both of my faces done. These guys are perfectly parallel to each other. Now I can go back and put my 90 on it. All right, so now I've just come from the planer. I've got two perfectly parallel flat um, faces. And this is the way that I like to do it, and it's for this purpose. Now I have options. It's just, it's all about giving me more options as far as taking care of the edge. So if I want to put this face up against it, I can. If I want to rotate it and do this face, I can. Whatever I want to do, I can do that. Um, why that's important? In this case, this grain here is going down. Well, if I could only use this face, I'll be going the wrong way. So now I can come up here and be like, that's not how I want it. Flip it around, and I'm good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. All right, so now I have three edges. I need to take care of this fourth edge now. Um, this you could do a few different ways. It depends too on what you're trying to accomplish here. If I want a perfectly nice milled piece of material, I'm gonna go back to the planer. I'm gonna run this guy through the planer just like this. Now you could go to the table saw and you could set it up a 64th heavy, rip this on the table saw and then come back to the joiner and go across one time and take care of that table saw edge that you just delivered. I don't like doing that because chances are, and I'm just kind of particular in this way, if you take all 10 pieces, you come back and run them and stack them all together, you have a pretty high chance that they're gonna be all a little bit different. This does not, this isn't designed to take things to final thickness. That's what a thickness plane is for. So for me, I'm gonna go ahead, join that edge, go to the planer and get exactly what I want and very accurately. All right, so now I'm back to the planer. I'm gonna take care of this, this last edge. So we've joined, we've planed parallel, um, and now we've got this 90 degree perpendicular to this face. And so I'm just gonna pass this through to clean up this top edge. Um, and like I tell all my students, I'm not trying to show you I'm not saying there's a right or wrong way necessarily. There's many different ways to, to achieve the same thing. Um, but in this case, this is the way I was trained by a professional woodworker and it's a, it's, it's, it's a well thought out way and it delivers a very good end result. Um, so this is how I do it. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a second to say thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't hesitate to like, share and subscribe. If you haven't already, please take a moment to check out my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Philip Morty Furniture. We have some really cool Patreon only content in the pipeline that we are currently working on and are very excited about. Patreon also is the best place to get your very own Philip Morty Furniture swag. If you don't know what Patreon is, please check out this video here. Once again, thanks for watching. Cheers. All right guys, so just a quick review how we uh, delivered this piece of S4S lumber from a rough piece of lumber. 
So we have all four faces, uh, flat, uh, true, and square. So we went to the joiner first, and we basically went through and checked and made sure the joiner outfit table was set just right. We made sure the fence uh, was set at 90 degrees. Um, and then we took care of one face. So we went ahead, we took care of the face, then we went across back to the uh, thickness uh, planer and we took care of this top edge and now we've made this top face parallel to the bottom and then back to the joiner and we set it up at 90 degrees and took care of one edge and then back to the planer. So a lot of back and forth, it's a good uh, workout but it delivers a very accurate um, result. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Um, if you did, please hit that subscribe button and I'm looking forward to getting more videos out there uh, to help people out on their journey in furniture making. Cheers.